Welcome, my name is Trisha Morris, and I would like to welcome you to my channel, Mathematics Simplex, where you will be able to view videos you might find difficult in your mathematics class. Please don't forget to subscribe. Press that button, subscribe. And also, at the end of the video, please like. So today I'll be doing synthetic division. Now, as we know, the word polynomial, poly means many. It's coming from algebra. So once you're able to add, subtract, and divide, you should be able to do synthetic division. Now take, for example, I have x cubed minus 4x squared minus x plus 1 divided by x plus 2. First, we're going to equate the x plus 2 to be equal to zero and solving so I carry over the plus two over the equal sign. So we have x to be equal to negative two. Then I have my open box. On the outer end, I will have negative two. While if you realize I'm having the variables at the top, so I have x cubed, x square, x, and a constant. So my polynomial right here, I'm going to take the coefficient of it. So in front of x cubed, you're not seeing anything. So it means that the coefficient is one. So I'm gonna put a one below the x cubed. The coefficient of this x squared is negative four. So you have to carry the sign. The coefficient of this x, you're not seeing the one. So I'm putting the one here. So it's negative one. And the number, which is a constant, is one. After having this, the first step, we're going to carry down the one. Then we're going to multiply this one by negative two. So I have negative two. Then we add negative four plus negative two, that's negative six. Then negative six times negative two, that's positive. 12, then negative 1 plus negative 1 plus 12 to give you 11, then 11 times negative 2, that's negative 22, and 1 plus negative 22 gives me negative 21. Now, what we have here is our quotient and our quotient here the first number it's called the coefficient of x squared while the next number is the coefficient of x and the last number is the constant so all of these represent the quotient, while the last part is our remainder. So the last part is always the remainder. So the remainder here, is negative 21, while the quotient is 1x squared, which is the same thing as x squared minus 6x plus 11. So if we take, for example, another polynomial, x cubed plus 6x squared plus 3x plus 4, divided by x minus two. Again, we're using the synthetic division. So we have 
x minus 2 equal 0, carrying this over the equal sign, so x is equal to 2. Then we're going to have the 2 on the outer end, and we are going to have the coefficients of the variable and the constant. So just remind the order really matters. So you have to have x cubed coefficient, then x squared, then x, then the constant. The coefficient of x cubed is 2. The coefficient of x squared is 6. The coefficient of x is 3. And the constant is 4. So the first step, we carry out the 2. Then 2 times 2, we get 4. 6 plus 4, that's 10. 10 times 2, that's 20. And 20 plus 3, that's 23. And 23 times 2, that's 46. And 46 plus 4, that is 50. So here our quotient is 2x squared plus 10x plus 23. Remember, this is the coefficient of x squared. This is the coefficient of x, and this is the constant, and the remainder is 50. Here we have another polynomial, x cubed plus 4x squared minus 5x minus 14, divided by x minus 2. We're going to make x minus 2 equal 0. So making x a subject, we carry the negative 2 over the equal sign, so x is equal to 2. So we have the 2 on the outer end. Then we have the coefficient of x cubed is 1. The coefficient of x squared is 4. The coefficient of x is negative 5. And the constant is negative 14. Our next step is to carry down a 1, then... 1 times 2 is 2. Add 2 plus 4, that's 6. 6 times 2, that's 12. And minus 5 plus 12 to give you 7. And 7 times 2, that's 14. And here, our remainder is 0. So what we have is the remainder to be 0. And the quotient, remember these are coefficient of x squared, so this is 1x squared or x squared. Coefficient of x, so this is plus 6x. And the constant is 7. Now when we get the remainder to be 0, it means it is a factor. And if it is a factor, then it means that we can factorize. But not all the time we can factorize. So in a case like this, if you look at this quotient, we're unable to factorize because we can't find two numbers that multiply to give you 7 and add to give you 6. So in a case like this, we can't factorize. But when we say something is a factor, sometimes we like to ask you to factorize completely. Now, we can test if something is a factor by dividing and getting the remainder to be zero. Or we could substitute into the function. So we can also test if it's a factor by substituting into the function to see if the remainder is zero. We can go ahead and substitute to wherever we see x. So we'll have 2 cubed plus 4 times 2 squared minus 5 times 2 minus 14. 2 cubes is 8. 2, 2 is 4, and 4, 4 is 16. Minus 5 times 2, negative 10, minus 14. So this is 8 plus 16, that's 24 
minus 10 minus 14, that's minus 24. So again, we have the remainder to be zero.